Okay, jumping onto the computer now, we're gonna go ahead and scan our image into Photoshop. So we're gonna go to File, Import, WIA Support, and here you can choose the folder where you wanna save the artwork and some options. I like to keep this one checked off and uncheck the Create Unique Subfolder and hit Start. And then we're gonna select our device here. I have my scanner set up and hit OK. So here you have some scanning options. I like to often use black and white if I only have a black and white line drawing. Um, however, for this one, we're gonna use color and here you can go ahead and adjust the quality. So you wanna make sure that you have a minimum of 300 DPI for your resolution. As you can see, you can also go up to 600 or even 1200 with my device. For this purpose, I'm only gonna do 300 um, just to keep the file size from not being too huge and click OK. And then we're gonna hit scan. Okay, we have our scanned image now here in Photoshop and we're just gonna do a little bit of cleanup before we go into Illustrator. So first of all, I'm just gonna crop the image. That looks good. Now we wanna make the lines and the colors more crisp and saturated. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure, first of all, that we're in RGB color mode that is the color mode that most of the print-on-demand sites require and I'm gonna go to adjustments brightness contrast bump up the contrast a lot and from here I just recommend cleaning up any stray dots or cleaning up any mistakes that you've made and you know that's the beauty of digital art and digitizing your artwork is that you can fix any mistakes you can you know make all sorts of adjustments change the colors whatever you want to do so I'm just gonna go through this and clean it up a little bit and we'll see you in the next step now one thing I like to do is to use this um, dodge and burn tool so the burn tool will just make the dark lines darker and that just helps to make these parts that I want to be black just be a little bit darker before we go into Illustrator. Okay, so that's looking pretty good to me. I'm going to go and save as a Photoshop file. So PSD. Okay, so I've opened my PSD file here in Illustrator now, and we're going to use the image trace tool, which is actually going to turn our artwork into a vector. Making it a vector just makes the lines way more crisp and smooth and makes it less sort of pixelated looking. And th this just gives it a really more clean and professional look. And that is what we want for our print on demand products is for them to look very nice and professional and as high quality as we can get them. So we're gonna just start by selecting the image. I just clicked anywhere on the image here and you're gonna go to Window Image Trace. Make sure our image is selected and here there's a few different options. You've got high color, low color, grayscale, black and white. You can also under advanced there's some different little settings here you can play with. You can also select ignore white so you just get the black lines only on a transparent background. Now for this purpose I'm just gonna choose low color because I really only have you know blue yellow and black and white in this image so I'm gonna go and use low color. Okay well that's looking pretty good you can see a lot of the lines have been smoothed out. Now I'm not 100% happy with it so I'm just going to continue to play around with some of the settings until I get it looking how I want. I'm actually going to just reduce the number of colors since I really only have the four or five colors here. Actually I'm just going to choose four colors and see how that looks. Okay so that's looking really good now so you can go ahead and finish playing around with your artwork here in Illustrator. Um, I'm gonna actually go ahead and finish it off in Photoshop. So from here, I'm going to hit Save As and save it as an AI file this time. Hit OK. 
Okay, so now I've gone ahead and opened my AI file in Photoshop. So remember, we have two files. We have a Photoshop file and an Illustrator file. So I'm opening the Illustrator file in Photoshop now. Now when you open the file, it's going to show you this dialog box. And from here, I like to change the image size. So we're going to select pixels here. And then I'm going to make it pretty large. So I'm going to go 9000 pixels in height and the width will automatically update. And the reason we want it that large is so that we can cover more of the print on demand product types that require these larger sizes. So we've got our image here. It looks pretty good. The first thing I want to do is just make sure there are no stray dots around the outside that could be just from the scanning there could be dust or just extra little marks that I made. So I'm going to go and erase the background. So this is a little trick I like to do just to make sure I don't have any stray dots around the outside. I go to layer, layer style, stroke. Now from here I'm going to select like a really bright red color and just increase the size. And you can see it's outlining with this really bright red. Now we actually don't have any stray dots showing up because if we did, you would see this big red blob showing up in these areas that we don't want them to. So if you do see those red blobs, just hit OK and then come here, select your erase tool and just erase any of those red blobs until all you have is your main image here. So now I just want to do a couple more kind of edits of this image before I finalize it. One thing I noticed is that this black isn't quite black. It's more of a gray and I want it to be like full black. So I'm going to go to select color range and click on this little gray color here. I don't want it to select the blue. I just want to make sure it's only selecting that outline. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to make sure this foreground color is black because I'm going to go to edit fill and under contents I want to select use foreground color. There's some other options here as well that you can choose and hit OK. Now we can see that black outline is like actually black. So from here you could create some duplicate layers, you can adjust the colors, you can do all kinds of stuff in Photoshop here. You could fill in some of these white areas with different colors. Okay, so that's looking pretty good to me. Um, we're gonna go ahead and save this file. We're gonna hit save as, and I'm just gonna actually save over this original Photoshop file here. Now I definitely recommend actually saving your file a bit earlier and making sure you're hitting Control S on your keyboard a bunch of times while you're working on this. I can't tell you how many times I've been working on a file and you know my laptop crashes or something happens and I lose all of my progress from the last hour or so. <laughs> so learn from my mistake, don't do that. So from here we're we can go ahead and save the file types that we need to upload to print on demand. So I'm just going to create a new layer and fill the background layer with white. And we're gonna go ahead and save this as a JPEG file. So this file is gonna be used for most of our print-on-demand products. Most print-on-demand sites accept both JPEG and PNG. So we're gonna do the JPEG first. So basically the JPEG is the file that has the background and now I'm gonna hide the background and we're gonna save it as a PNG. So the PNG with the transparent background you can see here is the file that's best for products like t-shirts or stickers or anything that would have a background that you want to show through. So we'll go ahead and save as PNG. So now that we have our two file types, we are pretty much ready to upload our artwork.